Hugo raises his glass at me. Cheers. Two cheese. Hey, hey! A middle-aged man in a backwards baseball cap, sunglasses, and cargo shorts jogs out of the back with the frenetic energy of a radio DJ. Everybody ready for some trivia? The restaurant cheers. Oh, man. Looks like everyone's really into this. That's what I like to hear. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Quizmaster Quinn. My actual name's Richard. I just like alliteration. More cheers. I see some of you brought your children here tonight. That's cool. My children won't speak to me. Ha! Ah, I'm just joking around. Classic Quizmaster Quinn humor. It's actually my wife that won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Let's get into some questions. <laughs> the first category is literature. Oh man, Hugo's gonna rock this one. Yeah. You know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. More jokes. Classic Quizmaster quips. Just trying to keep it light here, folks. Just oh. like I thought my wife was the light of my life. Hugo, you got this literature stuff, right? Does Franz Kafka have an irrational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Yes. This is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothlorien. Other notable sites include Isengard, the Mirkwood, and Rivendell. What is the elvish name for this continent? <sighs> Who was the writer that created Tarzan and John Carter of Mars? Correct. Edmund Dantes is better known as this man, the Count of Monte Cristo. The quizmaster walks around the room. I think he's doing crowd work. He stops by mine at Hugo's table. Whoa, nice cheese plate you got there. Thank you? How's that cheese tasting, big guy? Um, good? Ha ha, great! Cheese used to be my favorite food, but I developed a lactose intolerance later in life. I'm sorry to hear that. I also developed clinical depression. Oh. But people don't tell you to just get over your lactose intolerance, right? Nobody's like, have you tried exercising to get rid of your debilitating dairy allergy? Mm. Or you just need to choose to not let your throat close up when you eat brie? Anything? Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Quizmaster Quinn wanders off to another table. That was not really very funny. It's accurate, but not very funny. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. The next round is cinema. Oh yeah. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I'll retreat into them for days on end because obsessing over a fictional universe is easier than engaging with my real emotions and problems. This is too real. This is too real. Oh. Frodo Baggins, am I right? Yeah, too real. Ah. Is he okay? I think it's just his character, I hope. How's your cinema? Spotty, I don't know a lot about ah. movies, but if there are any questions about bad horror movies, I can be of service. That's an interesting one. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luke ask Leia if she okay. remembers? Their mother. What entertainer makes a fourth wall breaking appearance in the film Gremlins 2? Oh, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I've even ever seen Gremlins 2. I've seen the first Gremlins, but I haven't seen. I don't know if I've seen Gremlins 2. If it has, it's been a very, very long time. I got it. Oh. Which of these 80s horror movies dot, uh, does not feature an Indian burial ground as part of its setting? No. Yeah. Seems like we're doing pretty well. But we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pros. I look over to their table and give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gets a much sterner nod. And the next category is wrestling. Ah. I don't know anything about wrestling. Okay, we're totally boned. Yeah. Hugo grabs my arm. Wait, I got this. Huh? Man, you know who I would want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Please, it has been so long since I've been held. I can only process my emotions my, by making jokes out of them. 
Too real. Too real. Let's start the quiz. Remember that this is the lightning round. The first people to answer get the points. I look over to Hugo. He's focused. He's in it to win it. Oh. Question one. This was the original name of Stone Cold Steve Austin in his debut for the WWE. Hugo's hand shoots up. Oh. Yes. The enthusiastic one over there. Hmm. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. That is correct. Points to Ah oh. Real Monsters. Next question. This city was the location of the first ever WrestleMania. Oh. Hugo's hand shoots up again. Yes, the one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. The first WrestleMania was held in New York, New York at Madison Square Garden in 1985. Another correct answer for Ah Real Monsters. Hugo's destroying these questions. He's so passionate about this. <coughs> I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly kind of hot. Yeah, it is. Like, wow. Ooh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as the ah. shortest match at WrestleMania to date. Hugo jumps up, more excited than I've ever seen him. Chavo versus Kane. Ooh, sorry, Bucko, but that is incorrect. The answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania 28. No, that's absolutely wrong! The real record is Chavo Guerrero versus Kane, WrestleMania 24, March 30th, 2008. Kane took down Chavo with one, with one choke slam and pinned him for the three count. I will not stand for this travesty. Hey man, I'm just reading from the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. Uh. What are you, my ex-wife? The crowd erupts in laughter. Hugo blushes. He retreats back into his chair. Fine. Wow, Hugo seemed really fired up about that. Where did he get this encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know so much about wrestling? Oh, I... you know. He just picked stuff, pick stuff up. Huh. That sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to the quiz master. Alright, alright, alright. Looks like we're down to the final category, and it's a close one between Provolone 2 Lost in New York, Brian and Matt High Five, and, ah, real monsters. Hugo and I high-five. We look over to Brian and Matt. Carmen Sita and Daisy all playfully gives us, give us thumbs down and stick their tongues out. I eat a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact to show them just how serious I am. The final category is cool animals. Animals, huh? I never could take care of another living thing. Hell, I can barely take care of myself. Huh? I'm falling apart. Anyway, here's the questions. The Canary Islands were named after what kind of animal? Birds? What is the last animal that appears in the dictionary? What mammal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? Alright, I'm just gonna come around and collect your scorecards and we'll see who came out on top. Remember, the winning team gets a $25 gift card to Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil's will fulfill all your needs. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want that gift card. The quiz master goes in the back to tally up the score. I pick at what's left of our cheese plate. Mm. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine on a cracker with a little bit of honey and dried apricot. So what are your plans after our big win? Hmm. I'll probably retire, take Amanda somewhere tropical, drink something out of a coconut, always wanted to do that. What about you? Probably take my wings to Colin's gambling ring, bet it all on black, walk out of there with more rubber bands in the shape of animals than I know what to do with. <laughs> Bold, but I like your style. You want the last piece of Havarti? Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. After a couple of minutes, the quiz master jogs back into the room. Everyone immediately quiets down, waiting with bated breath for the results. Who will win the coveted gift card? I really hope it's us. Hey, everybody, we've had a great night. Lots of goofs, lots of laughs, a little bit of, like, crying in the back, but that's neither here nor there. It was a close game, but the winner of tonight's trivia contest is... Provolone 2, lost in New York. Come on down and get your gift card for Phil's Auto Care. Well, Phil, nominal services. Aw. Oh, God, I can't do this anymore. Please just take the gift card. Brian and Matt run up to grab the coupon and bow to the roaring applause of the crowd. Oh. I do my best to convey to Hugo a sense of appreciation for his hard work at trivia with only eyebrow raises and a shoulder shrug. 
We'll get them next time, Archie. They haven't heard the last of ah, real monsters. Hugo and I walk back toward our cul-de-sac, full of cheese and a sense of defeat. Oh. Brian's good, but I saw some tactical weaknesses there, which I think we can exploit for the next trivia night. He seemed weak on literature. I think if we can establish ourselves early on, it would hurt team morale. Maybe it would get them more focused on the cheese than winning. Uh. You're right. Next time, we'll be prepared. Shame about that one wrestling question, though. I'm not kidding. I plan to write a strongly worded letter to whoever employed that man. Come on. There gotta be a, there's gotta be a story there. What do you mean? I don't know. You didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were there at the ring yourself. Oh, it's just stuff I know. Come on, Hugo, I figured you'd be better at lying after dealing with every kid in school for as long as you have. I, uh, it's embarrassing. You know what's actually embarrassing? Not being able to explain basic algebra to your daughter. Um. You know what's definitely not embarrassing? Knowing stuff about wrestling. Hugo sighs. All right, all right, if you really want to know, just follow me. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Hugo leads me to his house at the edge of the cul-de-sac. We step inside, ah. and his house is exactly what I expected it to be. Neat, and filled top to bottom with books and art. Uh, welcome to my home. Sorry, it's so messy. His house is actually spotless. I follow him down a hallway. What are we doing? Hugo opens the door and ushers me inside. It's pitch black. He closes the door behind us. Hugo flips a switch, and I finally understand. Curio cabinets packed with inbox wrestling action figures line the walls, along with posters, cardboard cutouts, and every piece of wrestling memorabilia imaginable. A giant widescreen TV sits on a decked out media stand. I'm speechless. I look over at Hugo, who's hovering by the door, doing everything to avoid eye contact. It's, uh, this is really embarrassing. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen! Are you kidding? Look at all of this stuff! This must have taken you forever to collect! This is awesome! Can I touch this? Go ahead. I pick up one of his replica championship belts and toss it over my shoulder. Do you smell what I am cooking? I think the line is... It's meatballs. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, I don't watch a lot of wrestling. <laughs> I just think it's so cool how passionate you are about this. Oh, uh, yeah, I, um, I really, really like wrestling. He's blushing so hard right now. Oh my god, look at you! Oh my god! Oh. Hugo, you bought the wrong kind of pizza rolls again! Looks hmm. like Ernest just got home. He's yelling in from the hallway. I can see Hugo immediately deflate. I told you, those pizza rolls have less sodium. I just want you to be healthy, son. Ernest comes into Hugo's wrestling room and looks around with disgust. He notices me and scoffs. I thought nobody was allowed in your precious wrestling room. I never said that. I just said you're not allowed to take the action figures out of their boxes and pose them so that they're having sex with each other. Ernest gets flustered. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm gonna go throw eggs at stuff. Have fun with your stupid wrestling crap. Ernest leaves, then a moment later pops his head back in the room. And your stupid friend. Eh. Ernest storms back out of the room. I hear a door slam. Hugo wearily runs his hand through his hair. Sorry mm. about him. And sorry that I have to keep apologizing about him. He's just going through a phase, I guess. I try so hard to impress him, but it's obvious that no matter what I do, he hates me. Ernest has a thing against authority figures, and you don't get much more authoritative than a teacher dad. My ex, he gets to be the fun weekend dad, and I'm just Hugo, who makes Ernest eat his vegetables and turn his homework in on time. Hey, you love him, and you're looking out for his best interests. Take it from one dad to another. Someday, he'll hey. come to appreciate you. Maybe not someday soon, but someday. Hey. I hope so. Thanks for letting me vent. Of course. Hugo glances at his watch. Suppose it's getting kind of late. Let's do trivia again sometime soon? I would absolutely love to. I start to leave. And hey, hey. 
Thanks for showing me your wrestling stuff. Maybe you can tell me some more about it next time. Hugo smiles. That would be amazing. I'll catch you around. It only takes me a minute to walk back home. Amanda's sitting on the couch, reading a book about female photographers. Wow, I thought you didn't like reading. I don't. This book is all pictures. And even then, my patience is being tried. <laughs> Did you get to eat all of the cheese your little heart desired? Yeah. I am a happy little cheese monster. But I made sure to leave room for dinner. Who wants breakfast for dinner? Hash browns! Yes! Breakfast for dinner is the best! Okay. Toast dipped in egg! All or Blueberry pancakes! Well, only if you'll help me make them. You know I'm the world's best blueberry sprinkler and also totally amazing at heating up the maple syrup in the microwave. Now tell me all about that cheese board. Amanda and I spend the evening cooking an elaborate breakfast with everything we can find inside of the fridge. I tell her all about the trivia, but leave out the parts about Hugo being into wrestling. I figure she would probably find some nefarious way to use that information for a better grade. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. He did not entrust you with that information only to have you spill it to your daughter. I'm JK rolling with the light. Mmm, mustache. <laughs> That's so awesome! Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. Crying immediately stops. Not right now. <laughs> Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? <sighs> no, nothing happened. Go away. <laughs> something must have happened. Amanda. Get out. Okay, okay. I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. What? What is happening? What has her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. Yeah, what's going on? Girl, something is wrong. Why won't you talk about it? After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever is bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer-burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging out on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. 
I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen, like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. Oh my god! Oh my god! I love it! It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. And <laughs> Oh my god! That's so good! Oh my god! <laughs> I love this game, you guys! Oh my god! Oh no, it is! It's so beautiful! Oh my god, I'm crying a little bit! It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. Archie! So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. Yeah. Ah. The best friend? You got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M. that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F.'s on the same night. They all told me they were busy staying f studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. So, another important piece of information is... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You are a bad liar. Yeah, okay, I kind of suspected that uh -huh. there was a thing with the Noah kid. So are you! I learned from the worst, yeah. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos... Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos, without me. What? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I storm over there, and I'm like, hey... And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does, and Emma R. just, like, glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Uh... Gossipy one? I know! Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. 
So I left, without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to this shitty day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R. asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand. That's okay, you're trying. Yeah, I'm doing my best here. So what happens next? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R. says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Hmm. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, I do hmm. not understand. Do I not understand what she's talking about? This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for, like, months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay, and then she left me on read. And then, wait, left me on read? What's that? <clears throat> oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know, because there are red receipts. Oh. I don't know what red receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Wow, that, that uh. sucks. I'm sorry, Amanda. I almost expected it from everybody else, but... Emma R's been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Yeah, that's that sucks. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Yeah, probably. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? <clears throat> Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Mm. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. No, 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 it's not dumb. Manda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings, right? No, it's not dumb. Like, they're, they're being shitty to you. Of course, like, that's not dumb. It's not dumb teenager shit. Like, that's... People are being shitty to you. And it's okay for you to be sad and angry. I guess... Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Ah. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, they're, they're all kind of right. I don't want to mess this up, though. I don't want to say the wrong thing, because this is Amanda, and she's the most important person in my life. Single most important person in my life, bar none. I don't want to fuck this up. I really don't want to fuck this up. Is this what parenting is like? Jesus Christ, am I glad I'm not a parent. <laughs> Like, I'm having a really hard time dealing with this in a video game. I would not be able to handle this IRL. Um, okay. Mm. Yeah, so, real friends, don't pull that shit. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. 
If the other person isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Yeah, yeah, way, way more. Because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. <laughs> Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yes? I love you too, Dad. Thank you. Oh my god, yes! You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. Oh my god, I do it too. Welcome. Oh my god, you got dads. Oh my god, that was so good. That was so good. Okay, I really need to stop for the night. It's after 11 o'clock. It's probably good. Oh my god, this game is so good, though. Oh, Jesus. I still haven't gone on a date with Joseph. I should do that. But a friend of mine just gave me some cryptic advice about Joseph, and I kind of want to hold to it, but I don't know exactly what what you meant what they meant by it so i i have to i have to figure that out but anyway i'm pooped so this has been a lot of fun and i'm probably gonna do this again tomorrow night around the same time so you should all follow me if you're not already so that you know when i go live because this is gonna be an awesome trip and i just still have no idea who i'm gonna date i really like hugo but i also kind of really like robert too and i'm kind of i like matt but i don't know if matt's the right person for archie i think i think honestly right now it's kind of a toss-up between either Hugo or Robert. I don't know. I don't know. I like them both. Anyway, see you later, everybody. Have a great night.